Large Airport in the National Airspace System has unique and distinct characteristics, which can sometimes lead pilots to use the wrong surface in taxi, takeoff, or landing operations. Let's take a look at some of these tricky areas from the flight deck. Norman Y. Mineta San Jose International is a medium-sized multi-use airport located in the city of San Jose, California. Five miles northwest of SJC is the Moffett Federal Airfield. The runway configurations are similar enough that several pilots inbound to SJC from the north and west have misidentified the Moffett Federal Airfield and attempted to land at it instead. While San Jose International is predominantly an air carrier airport, there is a sizable general and corporate aviation presence at the field. The first time visitor to the airport need not be concerned as the tower is well versed in handling a diverse traffic mix. The runway configuration consists of two closely spaced parallel runways, one two left and right and three zero left and right. A complex taxiway system includes full-length parallel taxiways on either side of the runways. The airport is divided with air carrier facilities on the east and general and corporate aviation on the west sides of the runways. All transient parking is located at either of the two FBOs located on the west side and depicted on the airport diagram. Pilots, please note, the taxiway system on the west side is complex. There are several parallel taxiways plus connectors that provide access into and out of transient parking. This definitely requires you as the pilot to completely understand your taxi instructions, including route turns and hold short instructions before you taxi. This will help you avoid potentially dangerous mistakes. Thorough pre-flight planning will reveal SJC has its own Class Charlie airspace that underlies the San Francisco Class Bravo. A clear understanding of the rules and requirements when operating in this environment before departing for the airport will make the operation easier and more enjoyable. As with any airport with parallel runways and taxiways, the risk for wrong surface landings and departures exists. Clearly understanding your pattern entry and landing runway assignments is crucial. Paying close attention to base to final turns so as not to overshoot is even more important with the closely spaced runways. Additionally, although the tower will try to keep changes to a minimum, you may be assigned one runway and later on change to the other. If you are unsure or in doubt, ask the tower. A good practice while en route to your destination is to look over the airport diagram and imagine your route to your destination from any of the runways. Refine your plans as you get closer and have more information available, such as the landing runway as per the ATIS and up-to-date NOTAMs. After landing, or at any time you find yourself holding between the runways, pay close attention to taxiway markings. Pilots must ensure that they are both clear of the runway behind them and holding short of the runway ahead of them. This is crucial at San Jose due to the short distance between the runways. Hotspot number one consists of the intersection of taxiways Whiskey and Delta and the run-up area for runway 30 left. It concerns pilots utilizing the run-up area and when complete, either taxiing to runway 30 left at Delta without further communication or actually taxiing to the runway and departing. The possible consequences are obvious. At SJC, aircraft utilizing the run-up area must contact ground for further taxi instructions prior to leaving the area. You may be initially assigned one runway and reassigned to the other. An example of this involves ground control issuing you a runway, but then being switched to the other by the tower. This can occur for several reasons, but primarily the tower is taking advantage of the runway use situation. And by moving you to the other runway, the efficiency and flow of traffic is improved. Additionally, Due to wake turbulence requirements for intersection departures, the tower may instruct you to back taxi to the approach end of the runway. If you are ever in doubt or don't understand any clearance or instruction, ask the tower. They're there to help. Another unique aspect of the SJC operations comes after departure. GA aircraft may be instructed to make a 270-degree climbing turn over the airport before proceeding on course. 
This is primarily to avoid wake turbulence issues, but also helps with terrain issues on any given route. Being aware of the hotspots and other configurations at SJC will help pilots make better decisions and along with the ATC tower, keep the operations safe and efficient. We hope this short video helps you prepare for your trip to the Norman Y. Mineta San Jose International Airport. It's always better to know before you go. Yeah.